Are you looking to flip your very first house to get passive income to change your life? But are you struggling to know where do I start and how do I fund this whole thing? Well, stick around because I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step process on exactly how to do it. Let's talk. Flipping houses here in 2024 can seem intimidating because let's be honest, it can seem like there's a lot that goes into it. But with the plan that I'm gonna give you today, that will be a thing of the past. And at the end of all this, there's gonna be a secret that no investor wants to tell you, but I'm gonna openly share with you. So the biggest problem that most new investors are gonna face is where do I find a house and how do I fund this? And trust me, those are very legitimate questions that I wanna help you figure out. So where everyone should really start before getting into any of these questions and giving you the plan plan is you need to ask yourself one important question. Why do I want to flip houses? Are you looking to just make a quick buck or are you looking for a long-term passive income that is going to stick with you for the rest of your life and really create generational wealth for you and your family? Hopefully your answer was the second one because that's the approach that I'm going to take and that's the approach that I hope you and everyone else takes. So before answering that second question that I just said a minute ago of how do you fund it, let's start with a few things that you need to do first. Starting with step number one, you need to find the location and house you want to invest in. There's a saying in real estate and it goes location, location, location. This is the single most important part of real estate because if you don't get the location right, nothing else that I'm gonna say here today will matter. Finding a house that is in a good location next to good schools, public transportation, in an area that has a booming economy, all of this is so important for everything else we're gonna talk about. And you also need to find a house as ugly as hideous as possible. And I know that sounds like the opposite of what you should do, but trust me, the uglier, the better. If it happens to be burnt, outdated, all of these are perfect for your house. Step number two is you need to determine the cost to purchase and what's called the after repair value or ARV. This is where you need to start doing research on finding a good contractor. Using things like Angie's List or Google reviews to find good contractors or even searching your local Facebook groups for other investors in your area and talking to them and seeing who's good and who's not good. You're gonna need things like contractors, plumbers, electricians, roofers, maybe someone to do your landscape, uh, concrete. There's so many aspects to this. You need to find some people that are really good. Once you find people that are really good, you need to get estimates on all the work that you think needs to be done to that house. And like I said, the uglier the better. So let's just assume we're fully renovating this house. And at first, starting out you're gonna need to rely on these contractors to give you these prices but over time as you gain experience and you build good relationships you'll start to learn and know how much things cost moving forward the next part of this is to figure out what the arv is going to be once it's fully renovated now if you're a real estate agent then great you have access to the mls and you can go in and run your comps but if you don't, not a problem. You can work with another agent and see if they'll help you. Or if you want something free, quick and easy, you can always use uh, free resources like Zillow to get a good estimate on what your house is gonna be worth. So now that you know how much it's gonna cost to fix it and renovate, and you know what the after repair value is gonna be, now we're gonna start to back into it to see, okay, how much should I pay for this property? So rule of thumb is you wanna leave at least 20% equity when all is said and done. So here's an example. If you have a $300,000 house and you need 20% equity, all you do is take 300,000, subtract it by 20%, and you come up with a number of 240,000. That is gonna be how much you're working with in order to purchase and renovate the whole property. So let's assume that these renovations are gonna cost $75,000. Take that two 40 subtract that 75 and now you're left with $165,000 and that number is how much you can purchase this property for if you can't get it for that walk away move on to the next house so now that you're armed with these numbers you need to now move into step three which is finding the funding as a beginner we're just going to assume you don't have this large pile of cash or access to tons of lines of credit at your disposal so let's work through how you're going to find funding first thing you want to do is see can you qualify to purchase this property through the bank without any other hoops or anything to jump through if you have a regular nine to five job and you make good income 
there's a chance that you could uh, buy this property without having to get any type of hard money loan or anything else. Now, if you can't qualify like that, then you will have to go with what's called hard money lending. A hard money lender is usually a lender that just specializes in these type of deals. They will fund your uh, property, the purchase, they'll fund your renovations, all of it. Now, the downside with these is they're usually not long term. So you're going to want to move quickly, get in, get the work done. That way you can move on to refinancing and paying back that uh, hard money lender. Now that you have your funding secured and you got your money, you now need to start your work. And I got a few good tips because I'm currently renovating a house. And trust me, there's a lot of mistakes that I've made over the past several years flipping houses that I want to share with you guys. First thing you need to do is you need to start with demolition. You need to basically get this house to as clean and as blank of a slate that you can afford. If you can afford to get rid of all the old sheetrock, put new insulation in, new roof, new AC, then great. But if not, with whatever budget you have, demo as much as you can because the cleaner the slate you can start with, the better. Next, you want to move into doing what's called plumbing and electrical rough ends. This is going to be all the stuff you'll never see. It's going to be behind the walls, making sure your wires and plumbing are up to date. And just a side note, this would be a great time to check with your plumbers, electricians to see, am I going to need permits for any of this? Don't skip this step. I promise you, if you do, you will be burned. From there, you can move on to things like sheetrock and paint, uh, installing cabinets, and then you get into toilets, tubs, and then from there, very last thing, trust me, very last thing is install all the things that are pretty. Things like your light fixtures, your appliances, your sinks, things that are going to look pretty. You want to install those last. As much as I love my painters, sometimes they're very messy. Okay, so now you found a house, you funded it, your work is done. What's next? Well, now you need to get that passive income. So now you want to go out and you want to find a tenant. If you want to hire a real estate agent to market your house, to list it, to get it you know, listed and rented a lot faster, definitely do that. But if not, there's so many free websites and stuff that you can pay very little money for to advertise your rental yourself. And here's a bonus tip. Please, you guys, please fully, fully, fully screen your tenants as much as you can. I know things are going to happen in life, things that we cannot control. But if you do your part and your due diligence, at least you know you're going into it knowing that this tenant has a job, they are able to pay bills on time, and they seem like a good person. Now for step number six, you want to refinance that property after you get a tenant. You're gonna have several options from a DSCR loan to a cash out refinance conventional loan. So many options that you can do to pull that money back out, pay your hard money lender back. Step number seven is one of the best steps in this whole process. Simply repeat. Now that you secured a hard money loan once, it'll be much easier to do it in the future, especially because now you have an additional asset bringing you extra cash flow. So if you were able to qualify the first time, you'll qualify the second, the third, and every single time after that. And you want to keep repeating this process until you no longer need that hard money lender. The goal is to have enough property with enough equity that you can just lean on your equity and pull out the equity from all the property you own to just buy more property. That is how the wealthy stay wealthy. But there is something about the loan I just mentioned, that DSCR loan, that you need to know about. They are truly a game changer and will change how you do real estate moving forward. Click on this video right here and learn all about DSCR loans and how they can change your real estate game.